Good morning, Grade Sixers. Welcome to Worksheet Cloud Grade Six Natural Sciences. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you have a question during the lesson, please feel free to send an email to grade six at worksheetcloud.com. If you've been here before, you know the drill. Let's get started with today's lesson. Today's lesson is on water purification, and my name is Mrs. Hall. So why do we need clean water, grade sixes? People, plants, and animals need a clean supply of water to survive. People can die if they do not drink clean water. Nearly 1 billion people don't have safe water to drink. A child dies every 15 seconds from a lack of clean water. Just think about that. One in four children who die before age five worldwide die of a water-related disease. Children often walk miles every day to collect dirty water to drink. This not, might not be happening in your community, it might not even be happening in your country, right here, right now, but it is happening around the world. One so solution to solve this problem is to recycle water. One means of recycling water is by treating our wastewater. Now what is wastewater? It's dirty water. And what we need to do is we need to purify it so that it is safe to drink. What is water purification? It's a process whereby all the germs and all the harmful substances of the dirty water are removed so that people can drink it. Even if water looks clean to you, it can contain dangerous germs, viruses and parasites that we cannot see without a microscope. These organisms can make you very ill. So let's get back to wastewater, dirty water. Wastewater is any water that goes down your drain. It could be from any drain in your home, the dishwasher, your toilet, your bath, your shower, your basin, wherever water flows out of your home. Yes, even your washing machine. It flows away and it is known as wastewater. This is what toilet wastewater looks up when it reaches a water treatment plant which is what we're going to get into in a bit more detail as we go through this lesson. So ways in which water can be cleaned. Let's just do a quick recap because we have looked at uh, ways to clean water in previous lessons. Obviously, filtering water, um, you had to use your, um, your filter and you filtered out the insoluble particles and they were left here in the filter paper and the clean water went through. Um, this was settling and decanting so we let the water settle and all the water particles sunk down to the bottom and then we decanted off the clean water at the top. Putting water through a sieve, very similar to filtration, however Again, the uh, uh, insoluble particles, they get trapped by the sieve and the soluble particles, the things we cannot see, still go through the sieve. But is that water that we've cleaned safe to drink once we've done that? We can make it even safer by boiling it. Okay, we need to make sure that it reaches 100 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling point of water. We can kill the germs by boiling the water because boiling kills all the small organisms that we cannot see. But then again, we still have to ask ourselves, is it safe to drink? There are other ways of also getting rid of those tiny little microorganisms that you cannot see 
with your eyes. We can add chemicals to the water. The most common chemical is chlorine. Adding just the right amount will purify it enough for people to drink. You can even buy purification tablets to add to your water to drink, especially when you're out there camping, out there in the mountains, and you are filtering water from a river to drink, make sure you put in one of these purification tablets before drinking it. Now, how does a wastewater treatment plant work? How do municipalities clean our water? Right, a, a wastewater treatment plant is a plant where wastewater is cleaned to make it safe to drink. And here we have a picture of a wastewater treatment plant in South Africa. Here we have just a, a simple um, diagram, a scientific diagram, showing the different processes, what happens in step one, step two, step three, etc. And we're going to go through it step by step in a lot more detail. Now remember grade sixes, sometimes um, you might be learning new words, new scientific terms, new words that you don't understand. The great benefit of Worksheet Cloud is that you can go back and watch these recorded videos. And like they say, Rome was not built in a day, so no one expects you to learn all this new information in one video. Okay, take your time, pace yourself, go back, recap, revise, consolidate everything that we go through with you every day. Just remember, you're also getting a new video every day, so there's this constant influx of information. So take a break, okay? And know that if you don't understand some of the content that we might teach you in a day, that you can always go back and watch the videos again. So there are six steps to wastewater treatment. We start off with step one, screening. Then the second step is coagulation. Three is sedimentation. Four is filtration five, disinfection, and six, storage. Now, don't be scared by these big words, grade sixes. We're going to go through it slowly. I'm going to explain each step to you. And remember, you can always come back. So the first step, step one, is screening. And it's exactly what the word means. Screening, there's a big screen. Look over here, okay? And it screens out all the insoluble substances. Okay, this is going to need my glasses. So the wastewater passes through a screen or a filter that separates out larger solid particles. And you can see them over here. Screening is the first stage of the wastewater treatment process. Screening removes large objects like Diapers, yes, people flush them down toilets, nappies, sanitary items, cotton buds, face wipes, and even broken bottles, bottle tops, plastics, and rags that may block or damage equipment. People flush the strangest things. It lands up in our wastewater. So special equipment, like this big screen over here, is used to remove all the grit that gets washed into our sewage system. Okay, step one, screening. Step two is coagulation. Okay, what is coagulation? This is when the treatment plant workers, the staff, add alum. Okay, so it's a chemical and it is um, added to the water and it causes tiny sticky particles or sludge to form. The sludge attracts dirt partic particles, making them eventually heavy enough 
to sink to the bottom of the water storage tank okay so a little bit like the settling and decanting but it's called coagulation and they add a special chemical called alum that makes all the dirty sand particles sink to the bottom and form a kind of sludge it's also called flock step three sedimentation okay sedimentation okay let's take a look at what happens in this step so the water and the sludge flow into a sedimentation basin and as the water sits there the heavy sludge settles to the bottom where it remains until removal it's actually scraped away and removed away different countries use different processes to get rid of the sludge step four filtration you all know the word filtration it's not a new word to you okay and look over here in the background this is quite an impressive filtration system okay now the water passes through filters made of sand charcoal and gravel okay which serve to filter out any remaining particles that are left behind a lot of you have water filters at home to even filter the water that comes out of your taps and your filters also have charcoal in them and special filters to also um, filter out the tiny little microorganisms. But this is at a much greater, um, it's, it's much more advanced. That's the word I was looking for. Okay. The gravel layer is often about one foot deep and the sand layer about two and a half feet deep. That's a lot of sand and gravel that the water has to travel through so it's definitely getting rid of those tiny little particles step five is disinfection okay now if you disinfect something you make it pure and clean and i did mention earlier that you could boil the water or add chlorine tablets but do you think that's going to be enough to disinfect all this water over here that's gone through all those processes right water goes into a closed tank or a reservoir chlorine or other disinfecting chemi disinfecting chemicals kill any remaining microorganisms or bacteria in the water and it helps to keep the water clean until distribution distribution is when it comes back to your homes, back to your taps. After it is disinfected, the purified water sits in the closed tank or reservoir until it flows through pipes to your homes, your school and businesses. Step six is storage. The water is stored in a tank until the community needs it again. Now that's quite a lot to think about. Think about it tonight when you shower or you bath. Think about it the next time you go to the toilet and you flush. Where does that water go? Who cleans it? How does it get cleaned? Now you know. So, grade sixes, be aware of what you put into our sewage systems. Be aware of what you flush down toilets. Okay, and now hopefully you will look at the whole water cycle and the way water comes back to your home in a very new light. Something to think about on your own. Thoughts to ponder. Why do you think treating water is so important? How do you think people in other areas of the world clean their water? Is it the same as the way we clean our water here in South Africa? What do you think life is like in communities that don't have a sewer system or proper processes for handling sewage? And yes, there are communities like that out there. What options exist for communities in your country that don't have technology for treating wastewater? I hope this is making you think, grade sixes, and you're looking at it in a 
looking at it in a completely different light. What types of conditions occur as a result of not having wastewater treatment infrastructure in your country? So think about it. When you flush a toilet, imagine we did not have the infrastructure to clean that wastewater. How would we be living? What would the conditions be like? And grade sixes, there are countries out there that don't have the same infrastructure. Okay, I hope I've given you something to think about today. Thank you for watching Grade Sixes. Please know there are worksheets available for you to go and look at. And like I said earlier, please take it easy. Deep breaths. Breathe in, breathe out. This new knowledge, this new content, this new information doesn't all have to be learnt in one day. Okay, baby steps. Take care of yourself, look after yourself, and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thanks for watching Grade Sixes. See you tomorrow morning, bright and early.